All right, there we go. It is April 7th. All right, coming up on, on Easter here. I got some stuff to cover. Um, anybody want to get started? Anything pressing you want to? Hey, get? John. Yeah, go ahead, Randy. I'm glad you asked. All right. Real quickly, I heard I was on, and I don't know if anybody else, is anybody in the audience a current Toastmaster? Just uh, nod your head. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm in District 12, which covers the high desert down here in Southern California, down to Temecula and over to Pomona, California, I think it is. Anyhow, District 12, which is that district, has a speaker's bureau, just like some other Toastmaster districts. And we had a meeting last night, and I attend probably 50% of them because I'm one of the qualified speakers, and you have to do that. But we listened to a gentleman who spoke uh, last night after the, the first gentleman who was going for his QS. And the gentleman who came on happened to be talking about crypto. And I heard something from this gentleman that I have never heard anybody talk about. And so I wanted to run a couple of things past you on how you would counter the argument that this gentleman brought up. Okay. Now, mind you, I don't know, I'd never met the gentleman before. He, he was an absolute uh, passionate speaker. He had his own unique style, which was very interesting. He was very, uh, I, I guess you would call it high strung a little bit, but his approach to talking was interesting in and of itself. But the concept that he was leading to was the cryptocurrencies are on one side of the fence and Bitcoins on the other side of the fence. And the way he explained Bitcoin, and he was leaning towards trying to educate people and tell people, look, the Bitcoin is the way to go because it is, de it is decentralized. It has a third party evaluation or check checkpoint. And the way he did it was he described back, you know, several hundred years ago, we had one way of accounting. Then we had the two lines accounting and now with crypto, at least on the Bitcoin side, you actually have an independent verification by the users themselves through the computer system. And there's no possibility of fraud, et cetera, et cetera. On the other side of the coin or the fence, with all other cryptocurrencies, you're at high risk and there is a lot of cheating and the people who really make the money are the people who are in control. It's kind of like the early, the people who are coming up with this weird crap, so to speak, are the ones that are gaining and everyone else is chasing the moon, so to speak, and hoping to get lucky. Where in crypto, if you hold crypto two to four years, that's to the typical amount of time it takes for it to, I guess, double the coins or, or, or whatever that process is where you actually can be on the front end and make money. And his whole thing was, and he's a PhD, I guess he's doing a lot of research on it. And it made sense that crypt, if you listen to him, Bitcoin is the way to go and the other cryptos, eh. And so what would be your argument to say, no, that's not necessarily the truth? Well, first of all, you don't argue insanity. Okay. There's no way to win. Okay. If, if somebody has an, an opinion like that, and it depends on like, like why you were trying to argue it to begin with. If it's in a sales perspective and somebody has a belief and you need to change the belief to make a sale, then you identify what the belief is, where it came from, and you use the claim proof benefit to invert it, to reverse it. Well, one of the things he said, Roger just put it in the, in the text. He, he said, you know, Roger just said the blockchain is almost impenetrable or it's perfect, almost perfect, et cetera. But he had an argument against that. And he said, that's not true. But the people who are designing these cryptocurrencies use the blockchain as a method of disguise, so to speak, to, to make it look like it's impenetrable and there's no fraud and, it, and there's very third party verification, et cetera. Yeah. Unlike Bitcoin, and the thing he brought up about Bitcoin 
And I never heard this said before that not only is Bitcoin uh, real, I forget the, I don't have my note in front of me, but it's basically real digital property. It has been recognized to where you can not only lead it to other heirs, you can borrow against the Bitcoin, never, never use it or, or sell it or deplete it and always hold on to it and then pass it down generation to generation. And, <laughs> and companies love or organizations love to loan you money based on that wealth, that Bitcoin wealth. Yeah, and that that really sounds to me like an uneducated statement. Okay. Honestly. All right. Because there here's here's the deal. Bitcoin is a, a digital asset, just like all of the rest of the altcoins. And that's like saying in stock, Tesla is the only one to go for because it's a monster, right? And all mm -hmm. the rest of them are scams. It's it's just not true. They're just, it's just like the stock market. It's an investment. It's, you know, there, there is no such thing as no risk right. to say that Bitcoin is unhackable. Maybe it is right now, this second, but all somebody has to do is figure out a loophole. I don't, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I don't know if it's possible or not, but I've learned long ago to never say something is impossible <laughs> right, right, right. Well, i was just curious based on it was interesting the way he put it out there so i'm just curious about it yeah yeah no it it, it sounds like you know in generally when people have a speaking opportunity they have to be in control they have to be confident they have to not be you know knocked off their horse all that kind of stuff but that said, there's there's going to be people that nobody knows more than everyone else, right? There's there's always going to be somebody in the room that knows more about any particular thing than you. And when it comes to crypto, there's a lot of people that know a lot more about it than I do. I have a general understanding of it. I see it as a massive opportunity myself personally, and I've got some you know, wild, crazy strategies that I'm participating in myself that probably don't fit within a lot of people's risk tolerance. And, you know, so it, it's... And he, and he did he did qualify one of the statements by making sure that everyone, everyone understood. If you're like a day trader, then he understood in his, from his perspective and his research, he understood being in the cryptocurrency market, like heavy, if you're checking it and you're a day trader and you're in there every week and that's your lifestyle. But for what he was saying was for the average Joe, so to speak, no pun intended, um, it's a safer bet to be in Bitcoin because it's something that you can invest in and not have to worry and keep looking at it every day because you're not, it's for the long term, not for the short term. That That's not true whatsoever. I don't believe it. It's yeah, like yeah. buying a stock. That's like saying Bitcoin can't go down in value. It's bullshit. Well, we know it does. It, it right. does every day. It goes it's up down and there. down. It's it. This stuff is way more volatile. Even you know, you might say you might classify Bitcoin as one of the more stable of the unstable things in the world. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah, and and that makes sense. That makes sense. I was just curious what your perspective was. Thank you. But but here's the thing that I look at is I don't see Bitcoin myself as a good investment because it's already made its massive run, right? It's like if you. And again, I, I don't mean to take this. This is not really the call for investment and, and financial strategy advice. But let me just say this. This is just my opinion. Don't know if it means anything. But when I look at Bitcoin, I see it's already made the big run. It's like a it's like a large cap stock. It's not going to tenfold again. Right. It might. Maybe. Who knows? But the chance of it doing that is you know the chance of it going from like 50 grand to, to a half a million some people say it's gonna i say it's a long shot that's a really long shot i can't throw the ball that far for that kind of hail mary but the little coins the alt coins the chance of them running like xrp for instance xrp is at like 70 something cents right now 
they're claiming as soon as it comes off of the off of the the crap that it's in with the U.S. government, that if it gets a ten percent worldwide, you know, indoctrination, it'll go to a thousand dollars a coin. You know, I'd rather have my money in that thing. So and again, just you know, all right, we'll we'll put the whole cryptocurrency even we'll get back to get back to marketing <laughs> jeffrey you got your or sir jeffrey you have your hand up there first i think no nah, just jeff is fine was, all right it was fun kidding about it the other day though <laughs> well i got your got your email is that what you want me to cover uh yeah i'm just curious if there, we're having email problems across multiple urls Ah, you know what? And a know, bunch of other electronics problems at the same time, which is curious. But is well, there just, any way to, to track to I, track I will just, trace to see if if something's been you know something's been flagged as a you know as a scammer yeah. URL or what's going on with email? Because I'm I'm losing business opportunities yeah. because it, of it. It's been a problem since day one. Email has been an issue with deliverability since the very beginning because of the whole spam issue. So IPs, every email runs across an IP. The mail server has an IP address. That IP address has a reputation and it gets a reputation by a lot of different factors. It's a moving animal. It changes you know, on a minute by minute basis what that IP reputation could be. There are large companies out there that kind of like shuffle traffic through the internet. Like for instance, Google, anybody with a Gmail account, Outlook, anybody with an Outlook or Outlook 360, any of those, uh, Yahoo, another big email provider, they all have these reputation issues. So if you're, let's say you have a Google account and somebody with a bad reputation is trying to email you, Google might block it. So here's, here's one of the bigger issues that happens is why you get blocked and you say, you, you, know, you can say, well, I don't send spam. Why am I blocked? It's because of your host. This is one of the inherent problems with cheap hosting. Like you go to HostGator, you go to Bluehost, you get a $5 hosting account. Guess what? They share the IP. So your mail is on an IP that's shared with a thousand other people. If one person that's sharing that IP sends out a boatload of spam, the IP reputation is going to drop instantly. So at that given point, it'll recover because you've got a thousand people sending legitimate mail. So the IP will rebuild its reputation. But if they send it, you know, 11 o'clock and you happen to be sending email to your client at 1102 and that IP reputation just went in the crapper, your mail is going to get blocked because it's coming from the same IP that the spammer is using. And, you know, when I say spammer, it doesn't necessarily mean it's somebody sending out a million emails to, you know, sell in Viagra. I had, <clears throat> I've been in the hosting server business since the very beginning. That was where I got my start in the internet. And that was one of our biggest problems because we had servers and I had, you know, hundreds of clients on these servers. And it was, it was very common that one IP would be shared throughout a bunch of different clients. And I had particular clients, they weren't necessarily spamming, but they had very large customer databases. They had very large lead databases and they would send out, you know, their newsletter and it would go out to, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 people all at once. Now, some of those would be bad email addresses, so they would bounce. Doesn't mean it was a complaint. It just bounced. If you get a bunch of bounce email addresses in a, in a very short time period, that reputation plummets. And it keeps, it prevents other servers from taking in a bunch of garbage. So they just block it. They just say, nope, no more coming from that IP until it cools down. Roger, do you have a... Yeah, I'm hearing a weird recurring beeping. Is that somebody's phone going off? Or me too? I hear the beeping. What the heck is that? 
that is actually me nuts. is that john's phone vibrating on his desk get it, it off your desk john it's driving it, me nuts it is i just turned it off <laughs> thank you and, and you know to that point i'll tell you why it's doing that from a marketing perspective uh you know we'll, we'll talk about lead generation there's a lot of people doing lead generation and there's a lot of people that just want to make money with affiliate marketing. And you can do that. There's people that will pay for leads, like per, in particular insurance companies, like car insurance. They will pay like $5 for a lead with all it needs is a zip code attached to it. And they'll pay like five bucks. And that company will pay the lead generator five bucks for the lead he'll take it and he'll sell that lead to like 50 people for 10 bucks a piece. And I knew better, but it came from a trusted source. And last night I went on and I filled out a form to see how much I could save on car insurance. Well, so, uh, yeah, and, and, and Richard's like, oh, yeah, I know, Richard. I I feel so stupid for falling for that again. I know better. But again, it came from a trusted source and uh, stupid me, I I bit. And I the thing just will not stop now. It is just constant. Bing, bing, bing for people trying to sell me insurance now. So the master can be lured in too. We, oh, don't, feel, we don't feel bad. Oh, I, I I, bite on a good apple as good as anybody else. <laughs> but, you know, they totally, it's a total sham. And these guys are so freaking good at it. You know, I, I, I love good marketing, but sometimes I just hate good marketers. <laughs> Because they use it for evil shit. <laughs> so anyway, that that's so coming back to email, what I'm yes. hearing is I'm screwed and there's no way to fix it. Well, you're not necessarily. There's an easy way to fix it. If you go with an email provider that has a lot of horsepower, like Google, for instance. A lot of my clients uh, that had email issues, and Craig is one of them. Craig does this all the time because he blasts out email all the time to his, and it's not spam. It's people that he, that he had opted in, but he had such an issue with email that I recommended that he goes with a, a large third party provider instead of trying to do it through one of these cheap hosting companies. So like if you just get a G suite account and I don't know, some people love gmail some people hate it but you can get a g suite account you can private label it with your own domain so it's still your domain you control it but it runs through their servers they become your mail host it's like five dollars a month for an account and google is one of the big people behind the reputation they're one of the big factors determining on you know if that mail is going to go through or not so it, it's good to be on their side of the fence as far as deliverability. Yeah. So that's, that's something you might want to think about. Outlook 360 is another one. I really don't personally, I really don't like them, but a lot of people use them. A lot of people have had good luck with them. There's, there's other email providers that, you know, you just have to look at their deliverability rates. Google has a pretty good deliverability rate. They also have very good spam filtration to keep the garbage out. Yeah, so if you know, I can't seem to find any way to block the overwhelming amount of spam coming in, even through Kartra, and yeah. I can't get anything out. It's a little bit frustrating. Yeah, yeah, it's email. I, I'm telling Especially you, since right, I'm paying for the services. Yeah, email has been a a, a monster since day one. You know. The only time it was great was before, uh, what was his name? Sanford, Wallace Sanford. He was the one that caused all of our problems. <laughs> I knew him and I actually helped him do it, unfortunately. Uh, talk about somebody that takes something good and uses it for evil. That was a perfect example. 
So I, I, I don't know if you want you want to get into that story or not, but it's a it's a wild one. <laughs> I want to hear it. All right. Well, so one of my first things in in marketing was email. I, I started doing email marketing before there was issues with it. And I didn't know anything about programming. So I got on one of these alt boards and I found some guys that were talking about, you know, how to do it. They had no idea. They were programmers. They knew how to write code. They knew how to make programs, but they didn't have the, the sense and clarity of what to do with that. So that's where I came in. I said, if you guys can build me a program, here's what I want it to do. I want it to go into AOL. AOL was big back then. It was AOL and CompuServe. Those two pretty much ruled the commercial world uh, for email. So I said, go in, build me a machine that will go into AOL. It's open source right now. And I want to pull out criteria. I want to build a database based on criteria of a hobby and a first name. So they did. I could put in what name I wanted and what hobby or interest I wanted it with. So I could literally pull out all of the, all of the Johns that golfed, all the Randys that went fishing, all the Sues that liked largemouth bass. And I could pull specifically, this goes right to the ACT program long before I was using it, but the principle is the same. It was speaking someone's language. And I would, I would build these little, little databases of a first person's name because at the time I didn't know how to do mail merge. I was like that unsophisticated. So I needed an email that literally said, hey, John, I am an AOL member too. I noticed your profile had golf in it. I just came across this really cool da 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 and I would sell golf shit all day long doing that. And I wound up going and getting a baby book that had baby names and it had like 3000 baby names. So I just went right on down the list, created, created every first name I could think of with golf. And I had a big golf vendor at the time. I liquidated so much merchandise for them. It was crazy. And then I turned around and I did it for myself because I was at the end of a business I had a business at the time selling uh, sport fishing t-shirts and I did something foolish. I sold them through Walmart and Walmart destroyed a worldwide distribution network that I had built over five years. They wiped it out in about six months. Cause if you sell to Walmart, nobody will buy from you. It's just a curse. So anyway, then Walmart pulled their thing. And what they normally do is they spin you up huge. They buy more merchandise than you can keep up with. And then they pull the rug out from India and want it at a half price thing. And I told them they kiss my ass. I'm not selling it to them for half price. I'll burn it and laugh about it before I do that. So I was left with about half a million dollars worth of inventory. And I came online. I said, this is the perfect opportunity. I have the tool to sell this. I can pull every fisherman out of AOL. And I dumped that entire inventory into AOL using that technique. Hi, first name. I saw your profile. I'm a fisherman too. I saw this cool shirt. You got to see this. It's awesome. Here's the link. I got zero complaints, zero spam. This was before spam existed. And I sold stuff like it was going out of style. Unstoppable. Uh, here's another thing. I created my first ebook back then it was fishing recipes and i did it specifically not to write a book but i did it to move the inventory three times as fast so i i had 30 fish recipes i know these people are interested in fish recipes because they catch fish right i'm speaking their language what do they need next so i put together 30 fish recipes they're a dollar each or you get the whole collection in a book format. It was an ebook for $9.95. Or you get it for free if you just buy three fish shirts. Guess what? I never sold a book. I never sold a recipe. I gave a shitload of them away and I tripled my sales. No one from that point forward bought one shirt. They all bought three. 
So I dumped my inventory three times as fast. I never had to do postage on a book because it was all delivered instantly. And I was so freaking lazy. I didn't even have a mechanism to see if they ordered three. Any order just got the book delivered to them in the thank you email. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> so anyway, long. I made a long story long out of that, giving you the background. But one of the guys that wrote the program for me, his name was Samford Wallace. And he took that and he decided that all those AOL members needed Viagra. All of them. He didn't care what their name was. He didn't care what their interests were. He just thought they all needed Viagra. And it pissed some people off. And then if that wasn't bad enough, he decided all the people in CompuServe needed it too. And if that wasn't bad enough, that's not what got us in trouble. It was when he decided that every email address on the planet needed it, including all the EDUs and the GOVs. And he was dumping out, you know, we had a program that he and it was a group of eight of us. I kind of masterminded what we were going to do. They engineered how we were going to do it. And the, the seven of us begged him not to do this. There's better ways. And he did it anyway. He, he went out and he started sending to everyone. He mined the email address of everyone on the planet. And it was, I don't know how many million email addresses it was, but it caused so much shitstorm that you wouldn't believe it. The people in the EDU started attacking our servers. These are like, these are like high end hackers. You know, these are like the EDU people felt like they owned the internet back then. They did not want it commercialized. They were like, they, they didn't want any part of their little play toy being used commercially. They felt that that was theirs. They owned it. They ruled it. And no one was allowed to play in their sandbox. So their collective horsepower of hackability and, and just pure genius was a nightmare for all of us having commercial hosting clients. They went after all of them. They took down our servers. They, they didn't just go after us. They went after anybody that was commercially using the Internet. And it was bad. It was a violent time on the internet. And next thing we know, Wallace gets arrested. He had the feds show up on his door and they arrested him. They seized all his assets. They took away all of his computers <laughs> and they put him in jail. And they had nothing to charge him for because there was no laws. He had not done anything against any law. But they held him for 72 hours. And you talk about letting a wild animal out of a cage. Oh, my God. They let him out of the cage and he didn't go home. He went to a public access uh, library, got online, accessed his files. And here's what he did. He had the email addresses of every email address on the planet. He sent everyone an email with here's how to make money online, here's the tool to do it, and here's the database of every email address on the planet to do it with. He basically packaged up and he created the spam overnight. Everybody now had the, the know-how and the tools to be a spammer. And that's when that's when I came up with the phrase, be careful what you do, because you cannot get the shit back in the horse. That's where I came up with that phrase. It was Wallace. <laughs> and for a long time, there was a there was a Internet most wanted list. Wallace was at the top of the list and I was number eight. All eight of us was on there. I was on the bottom of the list. I finally worked my way off of that list, but I believe he still remains at the top. And you're talking about back in the, the early to mid nineties here of the long time ago, but 
not a proud moment <laughs> to be part of, you know, a major problem we're all still suffering today, but uh, is what it is. Wallace Sanford, you look him up. He's, he's just the most diabolical person I know. <laughs> <laughs> that comes under the heading of never call the medicine man a son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't poke that bear. But anyway, so email has been problematic since day one and uh, just, just kind of no way, no way around it. Uh, on another note, now that, now that we did that, that long brutal story, <laughs> How, is there anybody here that is interested in in hosting a giveaway? A giveaway is like where you get a bunch of people to promote all giving away a product, basically to generate leads. I've been approached. I don't really want to do it. It's it's not something I need or want to do. It's just it's not one of those things that's like, oh yeah, I've always wanted to do that. But some people would. It gives you credibility. It gives you notoriety. It gets you in with a lot of people. Um, I just don't know if any of you have any interest in that whatsoever. Who's the person that what do you, what's you the are? criteria, John? They do everything. The there's there's several of these. Uh, let me look it up and see who who's behind it. Oh, okay. Is this summit, John? It's it's kind of like a summit, but it's easier than a summit because it's just it's not, purely. It's not, a, Dan, it's not Dan Morris out of Tennessee, is it? No, it's Timon right. Finke. Right. Timon Finke. Anyway, I'm going to copy his name and email address, <clears throat> and I'll put it in the chat. Anyway, I told him I was not interested, but if anybody that I knew, I would pass them over to him. So apparently all you have to do is try and try and get like 20 people to participate. They have all the infrastructure. They take care of all the all the mailings, all that stuff. So really, all you need to do is find 20 people that want to participate in your giveaway. And you're the face of it. You're the. You know, you're the shining star. So if you've got groups of people that follow you and you could have that as a benefit to them, that could increase your value. Again, not, not something I'm interested in at all, just because it would take time away from fishing, <laughs> if nothing else. <laughs> I got enough shit to do. So, but there's a lot of people that are not in that. They're, they're trying to build. They're trying to build credibility, trying to build a list, trying to build relationships. It might be a good thing for that. So anyway, put it in the chat. Timon Binky. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that or not. But uh, anyway, yeah, he says he's not harvesting the data. I don't know really what's in it for him, but I wouldn't be surprised But what he was. So. Just, just know that you're, you're collectively making a database for people. And another benefit to you is you get the whole database as well. So like you've got 20 people now generating a database for you and you can tag them. So you know you like which one they came in from. So whether it's good or not, it's not an endorsement for me. I don't get anything out of it. I'm just letting you know. It's, it's an opportunity if... Uh, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, let's see. Oh, let me find. I have something I wanted to share with you about a big idea. We talk about big ideas, so it's a good idea for me to give you examples when I see them. Now, I don't, unfortunately, I don't have the email address that led to this, but the email was really good. And I'll show you. So this is the lazy marketer. And this guy's been around forever. And what he's doing is he's he's realized that all these marketers, they've they've run out of 
they've run out of steam. They've run out of juice. They've, they've rehashed the same shit over and over and over. And it just, they can't sell any more of it. So what he's doing is he's appealing to the internet entrepreneur that's tried everything and not been successful. And he says, we find perfect storms for internet entrepreneurs. The backstory for what he does is he looks for opportunities that are not seen by most people, and he makes them available to people that are looking for things to do online. So he says, we find perfect storms for internet entrepreneurs. So that's kind of like his promise there. And then he's got an interesting thing. Entrepreneurship is a lot like surfing. Success doesn't belong to the strongest <clears throat> the fastest are the hardest working. It belongs to those who understand what the ocean is doing and how to harness it. So he's appealing to your logic of, I don't have to work harder. I have to work smarter. That messaging really appeals to people like me because I don't want to, I don't want to be the strongest. I don't want to be the fastest and I don't want to work the hardest, but I want I want the success of riding that wave, right? So he is speaking a language. His landing page is kind of clunky. You have to scroll to get into it. But he's introducing what he calls insiders. That's his unique mechanism. Just a generic word. One word, that's his, that's his thing. Insiders is an ongoing surf report. This is the intellectually interesting thing. He's tying something, he's tying two unrelated things together in a very interesting way here. So it's an ongoing surf report for entrepreneurs and investors. We focus on finding asymmetric opportunities. I don't know what that is, but it sounds impressive. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Where even the slightest effort can generate massive outcomes. I mean... You've got it all here. You've got promise, you've got unique delivery mechanism, and you've got a very interesting way to package it that I've not heard before. So this is a great big idea. As, as clunky as it is, it should all be above the fold so you don't have to scroll. But the, the messaging here is right on the money. And this guy's been doing it a long time. He's one of the great ones at this. <clears throat> and then discover the ultimate service for lazy achievers. <laughs> so again, he is just speaking the language. If you want the URL for it, it's the lazymarketer.com forward slash insiders. I will put it in the chat. If you guys want to read the copy, it's, it's pretty good. You can learn a lot from, from, you know, this is like watching Frank Kern. He's at the same level. You probably, you know, may or may not ever have heard of him. Oh, I, I know this guy and his name eludes me all the time. Um, ah, Chris Rempel. This guy was big in SEO. I mean, it's, I, I feel like I grew up with it because we were in, in the same pot, swimming in deep water at the same time. And, you know, he, just like me, has survived. He's made it through. He's changed direction, you know, a dozen times, just like I have. And uh, he's a good marketer. So you can, you can learn from him. Okay, let's see. Anything? Is that useful when I share stuff like that and kind of break it down? Cool. Yes, very useful. <clears throat> awesome. Okay. Hey, uh, John, Rich has a question about spam, and he didn't want to get too far off topic. Okay. It's so uh, what he actually asked you this question before him, and I'm asking in his behalf because he wrote down your answer, and he don't really know what happened to it. Uh, okay. What he wants to do a campaign with the disability, a disabled community saying something along the effects about Hey, I'm Woody Blagman. I'm disabled. I have a sweet spot in my heart uh, to work with disabled people. And I want to, and he's something along the lines what he's going to say about how to get them, to, uh, how, how you can teach them to sell houses or something like that. Anyway, he wanted to send it out to all the different, uh, you know, different places that have disabled communities. And that being said, 
it, if he sends it out in a big, you know, like an email to all of these different places, surely it's going to start showing up as spam. So what he wanted to know, he asked before, like I said, but he lost the paper. How does he go about it in a way where it doesn't show up as spam without doing it one at a time with you know thousands of different places? Sure. What he can do, he can he can get a service that's made for that. Yes. <laughs> like SendGrid, for instance. How do you spell that? The S-E-N-D-G-R-I-D? Yep. SendGrid is it's one of the email providers inside of Kartra that you can use if you're going to do bulk email. So he has Kartra, so then he can uh he can do it there. Yeah, he could actually send his mail through Kartra using the SendGrid mailer, and then he won't get in trouble with Kartra. Okay, that's all it is. You, that's all you to do. do not yeah. do not use the Kartra mailer for that. Now, let me ask you one more question. He's going to put a little MP4 video on on their attachment. You know, him talking. Uh, will it still work the same way? Yeah, that's going to be an the, issue. Okay. The video isn't really in the email. The video is in a link. So what you do. Okay. You take a screenshot of the video with the little mm -hmm. play button. Yeah. So it looks like they're going to click to play the video, but you mm -hmm. link it to the page where the video is on. Okay. So, so you're not actually loading the, the video into the email. You're just loading the image that looks like click to play. Okay. And they click it and it's linked to the page that's going to load to play the video. Okay. And where would that page be? Would that be something he, he would house in his membership site? It could be, well, it depends. If it's in his membership site, usually people have to log in for that. So that wouldn't uh -huh. be ideal. It just, just, a Kartra, it? just a Kartra page. Okay. Can he just do it also like, just like we were talking before about his other things right off of the YouTube page if he needed to? Like sure. Right off of YouTube. Okay. sure. You can just link it right to YouTube if you want. No problem. All right, with that. John, and I, one more thing. So I, I'm just about done with Woody's uh, editing. Uh, the mp4 format like i said and within the next week or so i'll be able to send that to you so i'm just going to give you a heads up to look for it and i'll let you know i'll send you a message when okay sure uh randy on the on sendgrid you can sendgrid is an email program you can actually just use their interface to send mail directly you can load up a list of email addresses and send it right through there or you can use their api to connect to any email program that's how i use it in kartra is i use their api connector but but if you use it inside of kartra you select it and integrate it <clears throat> you said you can do it from there like if you have people already in kartra but yeah. how do you switch to that so it doesn't go on the kartra emailer when whenever you're creating an email in kartra you have the ability to choose the mail service that you want to send that particular email with. Oh, so so you, you can select Kartra Mail, which is the default, or you can switch it to SendGrid. Oh, okay. All so right. whenever I send a large email through Kartra, I always use the SendGrid, even if my email is specific. So we just need to go in and, and integrate it. Yeah. I use the Kartra Mail if I'm going to send, like, I send the 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 call notices out anybody that's like a paying customer i use the Kartra mail because it's got pretty high deliverability it's 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 pretty good they do block people they they're very sensitive on blacklisting people but as far as deliverability it's it's pretty high deliverability so I, you, I like to use it when i'm when i'm working with actual customers clients members all that stuff so how do you get to that send grid if you're not in Kartra and you just want to use it to send bulk emails? You just go to sendgrid.com, log into your account, and they have a whole control panel in there. I mm -hmm. haven't used it, so I they you know they probably have tutorials on on how to use it. So Mr. Chris, you got your hand up there. Let's see what you got going on. Oh, you're muted. There you go. Oh, uh, hi, yeah. John. Now, we, now we got you. Yeah, you do. Hey, uh, hi, everybody. Hi, John. Thank you. Um, thanks for the uh, work we did yesterday, John. Much obliged. And yeah. uh, I have um, the next thing I need to do, just putting it out there to you and the group, is uh, I need to today uh, get some logos created for um, my brand, but also items within the brand. Does anyone have any Fiverr tips on the process? So oh. like blanket blanket you know four people and come up with the best or and, and and also the other part of that is how much should i how how do i avoid overpaying 
you know, for okay. a service. So your, your best bet is to use them for their minimum. Like a lot of these guys will have like a $5 teaser thing Okay. and go in and, and just, just have like, give, give the same job parameters to like four or five guys mm-hmm. might cost you five or 10 bucks a piece, but your outcome is you, hopefully you'll find one that you really like, you like their style, all that. And then you can give them more, more projects. And I know with you, you need like four or five different things. It's all under one lid. So you need one guy to be, be keeping that all, all, you know, together for you. So it all looks like it came out of one house. Okay. So just uh, uh, make an initial contact, same job, you know, take one, one project, uh, send it to several people. Uh, mm-hmm. look for the minimum. I imagine there's like a, I can kind of review, they might have a portfolio or something, but either way, yeah, uh, yeah. knock out f- four people <clears throat> is the, what if I look at something and say, you know what, that's pretty good, but um, can you add this or change that color? Is that part of, is that part of the process? Again, I've not yeah. done it before and I just want to. Yeah, yeah. Generally in their description of their product, they'll say how many revisions you get. Oh, okay. That's a thing. It'll say like three or some of them say unlimited. Yeah. yeah. And, hey, John. And, so hey, so then I could go ahead and I could uh, go ahead. If I, if they're on the right track, I don't have to buy and say, Hey, can you finesse it this way or add that or change that? So that's sure. part of the process. And then once I lock it in, I say, well, that's great. And then I would just give them the second thing. It's like, here's another thing that I need, you know, what can you come up with? So that's yeah. a, that's a procedure. And I've, I've used Fiverr a lot. I've, I've probably used it you know, 20 times for different stuff. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times I, w- I won't remember who I used last time. I just go in. I've had really good luck with a lot of them. Cool. Oh, and I've never good. had, I've never had one that had an issue with making changes either. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. And, and Chris, uh, John sent me there because I was looking at doing, using Craig Deswalt's guy, Joe Potter, and he's not cheap. Um, he's really good, but the one you see behind me was done by a person on Fiverr and they gave unlimited re- revisions and I went with the premium package. So you can test a few first, but I just found one that I liked the portfolio and I just, I just gave it to them. But that was after trying one other person. It, it, they didn't get the concept. Yeah. Okay, hey, Fiverr thanks, question. Randy. Sure. Uh, now that we're talking Fiverr, I've used Fiverr also, and one time to get a logo, for instance, because I wanted to get maximum creativity, I engaged eight different <laughs> logo developers that I vetted and liked their examples of. But the problem I have is that ultimately the one I select, I'm going to want to buy the premium unlimited usage of that logo. Yeah. And so when I initially sign up, I, I don't want to buy those premium packages for the seven people I'm going to reject. How do I negotiate with them and say, I'm only doing your, your low cost entry level package. But if I go with your logo, then I'll buy the. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's exactly what I recommended to Chris is go do that. Just get the minimum thing, give them all the same project and see which one you like. And then you're in direct contact with them. You can tell them exactly what you need. And then they will build you a custom product on Fiverr and they just send you the link to order it. And if you tell them exactly where you're headed, they're going to work harder because they're going to want your long-term business. So if other things, products and projects are coming and, and you tell them ahead of time, hey, if this really works, then I'm going to need several other projects. You tell them you'll be a long-term client. And they'll work even harder on that initial low cost product and they know what's coming. What's, yeah. the, what's the part about, um, what's the part about buying the unlimited rights to it? I, I thought if you're, if you, I thought if you pay them that it's yours, do you, ha- is that a second part of it where you have to? Well, really I've, do- I've never actually seen one that you had limited rights to. Mine was. What, what, what it is, it's the files. Like if you want an editable file, I always like to get the original Photoshop document. So later on, if I want to edit it, I can do that. But so it depends, it's hey more John, expensive. Hey yeah. John, it actually depends on what you're, on the packages that they're offering. Because the one that I had, as far as the brand, that design behind me, I got the rights and a certificate, et cetera, that it is mine. 
that they've released all the rights and, and, and all that to it. And it's a whole package. Okay. And you get that. And now anybody else, it's it's public. <laughs> and anybody else that tries to use it, they're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, that's the whole copyright deal. So, you know, there's some of them. What you can do is you, you can get a like a work for hire contract. Mm -hmm. And if you if they do anything under a work for hire contract, the company owns all rights regardless. So, you know, like if you're using outsourcers or or anything like that, it's a it's a good idea. You can Google work for hire contract. It's a standard contract. And that basically is all it says is doesn't matter, you know, what you paid them or, or anything. As long as they're working for you, you own all all physical rights or all intellectual rights. One other thing I would toss in there, John, you put, you you touched on it is be really clear in your um, in in your instruction, because if you don't really know what you want, um, anything will do. And that's kind of where they go is anywhere. And yeah. you're kind of touching on what whatever their limitations are. So the more detail you can provide at the front end, um, yeah. the better. And that, that can actually be a good thing and a bad thing. Because if you know exactly what you want, that's a good thing. But if you're trying to tap into their creativity, the more you tell them, the more you're restraining them. So it could work for you or it could work against you. Agreed. If you, if you know exactly what you want, then yes, I would say absolutely be specific. But if you don't, and you're just trying to find the most creative cat you can find, then don't don't tell them much. You know, let them let them show you what they're worth. I think there's a hybrid solution to that potentially. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of being specific, like I want this color and that color and and this font or whatever, say maybe just saying, listen, I want a a logo that uh, exudes or that expresses confidence or something that's friendly. You know, in other words, uh, maybe just an emotion. Yeah. Of what your company or what your messaging is without specific yeah. fonts, colors, design work. So yeah. that might be a way to give them something to go on, but not tell them what direction to take. Sure. And, a, and, a, and another thing that might work in your favor too, is if you have a color scheme, Yeah. just say work within this palette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And let's see what you can do within this palette. Yeah, I hear blue. That's that, that touch. I hear that. Um, there, I got a book a while ago about, you know, what, different colors represent you know red is red is red unused on science for a reason but um blue is um blue in uh, uh um represents trust or or elicits trust you know you see like, like chase bank you know or a lot of things uh it's, uh it's trust and freedom as well yeah i think isn't american express american express is that uh they're th they're on their website so anyway uh yeah, yeah. but uh Okay. Yeah, Thanks, brown, brown, brown is reliability. That's UPS. UPS. Yeah. yeah. And purple is royalty. Yeah. Um, I don't remember orange. Orange is power. So powerful royalty. That's that's uh, FedEx. Yeah. Yeah. So they rule the skies. They're royalty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boy, I, I just really quick. I, uh, I was watching a John Oliver thing. Uh, watching a thing with John, uh, John Oliver last week and he did a thing on truckers. And I did not realize, uh, real quickly, there's a cost for what I'm trying to get at is that there's a 300% turnover in interstate trucking. It's a huge problem because they're, um, they're getting, anyway, they're getting squeezed and they can't even make a decent living. And the point is that even the Amazon trucks are not owned by, if you look at, I just looked at FedEx now that I've seen it, it's a like owned and operated by a separate delivery company, mm -hmm. FedEx and even Amazon. Yeah, Those aren't yeah Amazon but trucks. the same company that owns FedEx owns that company. Oh. But, it's the uh, same game that Walmart's plays with their trucks. I was in the trucking industry and my father was. That's exactly what they do. It's kind of like you owning an entity and you own another entity to lease to the other entity. And it's a, yeah. And it, it separates and liability. Right, right. So so next time I'm going to be really nice to my FedEx guy and the UPS guy and really appreciate what they're doing. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you everyone for your input. Yeah, yeah. And you you guys should have seen I was on a I was on a Zoom call with the with Mr. Chris there last night. And you should have seen him knock out his Kartra account. He put that thing together like nobody's business. <laughs> 
you know, just, I was like taking shots every time we do a page, do, do a page, take a shot, do a page. After a while, I was like, I don't care. This is fine. Look at, let's go. It was, it was like beer pong. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. envious. But anyway, but yeah, it was, it was good. I, I just, I, um, and part of that was just, um, uh, part of that was just trusting uh, here's the thing, and I and I shared this with someone today. Is that, and I actually wrote this. I wrote, yeah, I, I sat there and I um, worked with a marketing coach last night, and uh, and I said it was uh, a frightening, you know, it's frightening uh, to do it. I said, but he was not emotionally attached to my fears. You know, John is not. John doesn't is not. He's. I don't know. It doesn't have the fear. So he was moving forward, and I was like, and and so I. So I'm just saying, I detached from the results, trusted trusted the process, and it went a lot faster. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I just have to drag you along, kicking and screaming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, there's that phrase. There's that slogan: <clears throat> "Let go or be dragged." <laughs> Let go. Or be dragged. I chose, I chose not to have John drag me through the process. Made it easier on him. Made it easier I, on me. Yeah, and I, I have no problem doing it too if I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. All right, Mr. Richard, you got your hand up there. Yeah. One thing I tr tried the Google Gmail with the branded stuff to see how one little teeny problem with uh, Google. They're uh -huh. very upfront. They they supply zero support, none, nada for their email, period, the <laughs> end, full stop. It's like, now if there's something, if something goes wrong, it's done. You're over. They, they don't talk to you. They don't, along with other now things. Keep, like, keep in mind, though, they have two different services. The commercial service that you pay for is different than the free Gmail. Gmail is free. And yeah, you are totally on your own. Even with, the, even with the business one, though, John, because I paid for the business one thinking with, it made a difference. It doesn't. Really? Because I've had, I've had clients that they would actually get on the phone with them and walk them through stuff. If you're buying Google ads, that's the only time you'll ever get on the phone with anybody from Google. Period. Okay. period full stop. Believe me, I've spent months. Remember that little <laughs> video I did and got banned from Google? Yeah, no, you might have you got know. on their radar. <laughs> I have to, I'm going to have to sell this company to my son or something, be able to have to be able to run e uh, Google ads if I ever want to do it, but it caused me to get a lot more creative. And I found some other things that I don't have to go through Google. And I think it'll actually get me more traffic than Google would have anyway. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Google is definitely not the end all be all. There's a lot of other traffic sources on the planet. That's for sure. Okay, the other thing I need to know, John, is I don't know if I've stepped on something for you that I haven't stepped on. The last three support tickets oh, I've no. submitted to you have been completely unanswered, including the one last week about asking about sample sites, because I have a client I'd like to show some sample sites to, and short of just uh -huh. picking some pretty sites and saying, John did these, I'd actually like to <laughs> that, that John actually did, and I haven't heard anything in a week. Can you? Oh, I've... I've I I've actually answered all the all the support tickets in there. I answered. I think you had a couple of them in there. They they got answered. Um, I don't remember exactly when. Tell the truth, Richard. You just didn't like his answers, and you want a better one. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm not. I'm not, get, I'm not getting the emails for the uh, for these calls. But I I but I've got the link, so I didn't think that was a big deal. But no, I haven't gotten any of those emails. And you can quite literally type gadiddlywop at rp2.me and I'll get it. Okay. So I'm not uh, sure what's going on. Well, send send me an email outside the support system and I'll be able to respond back to you there. I'll look. Uh, you might have the issue of being blocked by Kartra. Because oh, I know that's, I'm, that's, that's it. That could be it. But I'll, I will send you a thing outside of it. And to answer the email spam question, um, I've set up a catch-all account for rp2.me. Uh -huh. So you can literally put anything in there. <laughs> but I, everybody that I want to get email from, I give them a unique email address. And yeah. Google, I mean, GoDaddy is a good one for that because GoDaddy is constantly being scraped for the, DS, the DNS records and all that stuff. 
Yeah. So yeah. I'm up to uh, godaddy3.rp2.me <clears throat> because when I start getting spam at GoDaddy, I just, everything from GoDaddy goes to the spam and I give them a new email. And I, found, and I found that that actually is enabling me to get to handle my spam. I've lost two domains to spam where you're just getting, three, you know, 300 and it's all, it was all to Richard at, and there's no way of finding out which is the violating email. So if I do a unique one, I know who did it. And I can also tell me if I start getting offers for Tahiti vacations from you, John, I can say, Hey, John, you got hacked. Give you a new email and you can go after whoever's <laughs> gone after your stuff but i'll send you another direct email and okay it's worked out i appreciate it thanks yeah and the other thing in answer to the the samples i actually put them up on my website so you can grab them right off my website if you go into the services the web services i put god probably about 30 of them on there for you super did you uh find out why i was being blocked access to uh the act program which i have is the one is yeah. the only way you can access that stuff and it says that that account is shut down did you reactivate that for me or was that no, I, I actually that one i believe it was a credit card issue and it was probably an expired card because they do that they'll they'll like try three times and then they just they just cut it off is there so, a way of updating a credit card in there because uh i changed over to a credit card that that does that it, it'll obviously expire, but it's the major credit card that I put all my business stuff on. So, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can change a card from, I've got a self billing link for Kartra. Some people have issues with that. I put a support ticket into Kartra to figure out what the deal was. And what they said was if you've got, I believe it was your, your browser has to be Java enabled and cookie enabled as well and if it is then it should work i've only had one guy that it it still didn't work for and he tried it in a different browser and then it worked for him but it was it was either he had his java disabled or his cookies or they said either one of those can can cause the issue but the other, you know, the other workaround for it, and I've done this for a lot of people, is I can do it on, I can do it myself on the back end. And, you know, you can just send me the info or call and Barb can do it over the phone or, you know, whatever. So we can always get you okay, fixed up. Okay, well, <laughs> if I send you a direct email and we get the the problem I'm having getting email from you sorted out, then it'll, oh. everything will be good. So thank Okay, you. perfect. Awesome. Roger, did you have a follow up on that one? No, completely different brainstorming request of oh. everybody, but I don't know if Gwen or I was first. I think Gwen's had hers up for a bit there. We'll see, if, see, she's, see if she's still with us. I'm with you. Awesome. How's it going? It's going. <laughs> My question is on SitePop. Okay. I know they, they did an update because we're having issues with the Windows um, computers working with it. But um, I've had some drops after that, and I don't know if it, I, I, I've had to update like my um, Android a couple of things, but I'm trying to tell all my clients, make sure it's updated, make sure it's updated. But I've had some weird, yeah. like drastic drops from like one to 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that all of those drops were, they were from our end software updates. We had to do some major software updates because Google changed their, their search engine result pages. So we interact with that search engine result page to do our work through the, through the software. So they made a major update to that. And then we had to redesign the way we interact with it. Oh boy. Okay. And that caused a lot of havoc as far as having to update the, the software and then actually in a lot of cases, like I've got like 50 phones in my office here running this thing. And a lot of them look like they were active, but as soon as I touched them, then it, it prompted the update. And I noticed when I had the update, some of them, and this, I don't know what the difference is, but some of the actual phones 
not only required me to run the update, it required me to log out and then log back in, which normally you never have to log out, log back in of the software. It automatically, you know, when it starts, it just, it just logs you in. But I noticed that in some cases where we had to do that, we had to actually log out and then log back in. And then that seemed to solve the problem. Okay, well, maybe I will try that and have them do that. I've got one client with like 10 computers running two. Yeah, two now I noticed on the Windows, I run the Windows on this computer. And I noticed when I ran the, the most recent update on it, it had it had an issue. It didn't install the little desktop icon. Interesting. So it's it's got the generic icon, but it's not the site pop icon. So I don't know if they're like, maybe it was just a test update and they didn't push the full update out or not really sure. I'm going to have to check with Chris and find out what's going on with that. But as far as I know, on the Android app, I believe that one is solid and stable at this point, because like I said, I've got 50 of them running like right there and I can see them. They're all hooked up. It's the Windows one I'm, I'm after because I've got a client. Okay. Well, I know they just did an update that I that was not complete because, it, like I said, it's missing the icon. <laughs> so. Can you let me know when you check with Chris on that what the outcome is? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll find out. And then what we'll do, we'll send a, a blanket email out to everybody. Okay. I, I need to tell people they might need to log out, and log back in with their uh, with their Android stuff, too. Yeah, I'm struggling. Too. I'm not sure if mine's actually logged in at the moment or not. <laughs> so, I had, I had um, one of my Android phones blow up yesterday because I, oh. I leave them plugged in all the time. So they get the battery swell. And the battery swelled enough that it actually just blew the case apart. Big old, big old pow. And it's like, holy shit, there's pieces on my phone on the ground. <laughs> I didn't know because I'm about oh to work. Yeah, I I have found that it's just best to replace the batteries before they blow your phone up. You know, when the when your eighth of an inch phone gets to a half inch thick, yeah, you're due for a new battery. <laughs> Your phones are not supposed to get pregnant. <laughs> another not... another um, workman's comp hazard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your cell phone is not meant to give birth. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's awesome. All right, let's see. Roger, go back to you. Hey, John, it's getting pretty late. So instead of holding everybody up, um, I don't know how many of us are still on, but I'd like to ask you tell me if this is okay. If there's anybody who is okay with my running some brand name ideas, pass them maybe via email and just get some reaction. Uh, could you shoot, shoot me an email? Could I put my email in the chat and just have oh, you yeah. me an email and say, I'm okay with it. Keep yeah. in mind, this is a brand name for a sensual slash erotic product but i'm we want to avoid using any explicit terms at all so sure. and there's it, a little complexity I, yeah we've got you know we've got what two four six eight we've got 10 people we got 10 people on right now you can more than welcome to put it in but uh you know let's uh next week when we get on Put it on in the beginning of the call when we've got everybody on. Okay, that's that'll, that'll, that'll get you more more eyeballs on it because when right. the, when they see the replay, they don't see the chat. Right. So if you want to give it out uh, audibly right now, so they have it, you're welcome to do that too. Oh well, my email is Roger B. Personal at Gmail. Perfect. That way, anybody seeing it on YouTube, they'll have it too. <laughs> great all right sounds great thanks so, so cool not sure if that was your desired outcome but <laughs> the only people watching this are basically our members so you're, you're yeah there. they know they know michelle and i so i'm not worried about it yeah yeah you're you're pretty safe but uh you know last i i think i think i've been uh throwing this teaser out for the last couple of weeks and you guys were supposed to have reminded me, but 
that the one about the uh, the lead magnet that led to $20 million, which is, it's an awesome story. <clears throat> and I don't know if you guys want it this week or you want it next week. I, I, go, John, go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's get it out there. Cause I think I've, I think I've used this as a teaser for the last couple of weeks, but anyway, this was this guy when I met him, he he was new to the internet marketing space. He was a brilliant marketer. He was just new to the space. He had done this in the real world and talk about somebody that has a process in the real world that you can, you can digitize. This guy did it to the tune of like $20 million the first year. And this was, this was real early. This was like before, you know, all of the stuff that we know is in place. So we're talking, you know, probably around 2000, 2000, 2001 in that era. So anyway, the, the deal was I had this friend of mine and you guys have seen the, the movie, The 40-Year-Old Virgin? Well, I had a friend that was the 40-Year-Old Virgin. And, you know, this, this guy, he, he needed to be laid more than anyone on the planet <laughs> and, and he just had he was in like a vacuum of technique he, he was like a black hole with women he didn't know how to talk to them he was just didn't have a prayer and and he knew it and he didn't even try he like gave up so I'm thinking, you know, what can I do to help this guy? You know, it's a friend of mine. He, he def, desperately needs help. So I went to Google. And, and I, in fact, it wasn't even Google at the time. It was Alta Vista, I think. I went on to Alta I Vista. I those phone calls, John. <laughs> <laughs> I went on to Alta Vista and I looked up, like, I, I forget what I even looked, but I was looking for basically dating advice for him to try and help him. And I found a, a lead magnet for that. And I signed up for it myself because I knew he wasn't going to do it. So I signed up for it myself and I started getting the sequence. It was an email sequence. And it was like, holy shit, any man that walks the face of the earth needs this information. <laughs> and and I was at this point where I was getting ready to really expand my business into commercial SEO. And when I saw this, it almost changed my mind. It, it put me at a fork in the road. Do I, do, do I go commercial or do I just promote this guy and make a shitload of money? Because this guy had everything I didn't. He had the marketing funnel thing down he had something that I could literally pour traffic to, which I was really good at. And we could have both made a fortune. So I contacted him outside of his funnel. I, fig I figured out his email address and I contacted him. And he was under the name. I didn't know this wasn't really his name. His, his name that he was going by was David D'Angelo. Some of you may have heard of him, but Anyway, I contacted him and I said, hey, do you have an affiliate program? I would love to promote you. I would love to do SEO and drive a boatload of traffic to your offers. And he didn't know what an affiliate program was. He was that early into the market. He just knew how to sell shit. He knew how to sell his stuff. He had the messaging down. He had everything. I mean, you talk about the perfect sequence of a funnel and he had it he had the lead magnet his first lead magnet and it followed this step it followed this perfectly he drew the timeline out and he knew where his prospect was on the beginning of the timeline and he knew where they wanted to be and he set up a sequence that followed those steps just like frank kern does and he gave them 90 percent and then he would make a sale and it was a small sale and that sale would leave them wanting more. And it, it led into like a $10,000 live event. 
It started off, I believe, with a $7 sale, then do a $49, then do a $249. And I think he jumped right from $249 to $10,000. And a live event, going out, personal hand-holding, we're going to go out, we're going to go on a field trip, we're going to do this. $10,000. And he sold it out every time he did it. It was amazing. So anyway, the, the, the sequence, I forget what his first lead magnet was, but I think it was, I, I believe it was how to talk to women. And he prefaced that with why you would want that was he said, you're never going to get a date if you can't talk to women. And, and that was like everybody, nobody disputed that, right? If you can't talk to women, there's no way you're going to date one right? If you're not going to date one, you're not going to get intimate with one. If you're not going to get intimate with one, you're not going to sleep with one. You're not going to marry one. You're not going to have a life partner, right? It was, it was like the ultimate throw you under the bus and leave you dead at the side of the road if you didn't follow his instruction, right? And he was so keyed in to every one of those things he was keyed into their fear of they were never going to have sex. He was keyed into their fear that they were going to die alone and not have a, a life partner. You know, it wasn't just about the sex, but it was because that was the point in their timeline. So he said, he, and he prefaced this, you know, this is the beginning of the journey. If you can't master this, you are not going to win. And he gave it to them for free in a lead magnet. It was how to talk to women. So they download this and there was an exercise behind it that they had to actually do that would prove that it worked. And anybody that did it, it was proof 100% that it actually worked. And guess what? Once they did it and it worked, their desire to take the next step, because they don't know what to do now. They just know, oh my God, this guy told me what to do and it worked. What do I do next? right? It gave him useful information, but incomplete. It wasn't going to get him to his ultimate goal, but it proved to him, it gave him the confidence that he could get there. And that confidence was based on the leadership of the one that gave it to him. And I'm telling you, if you can follow this in your business with whatever you're doing, you're going to make more money than you can imagine. Seriously, it's about figuring out who you're talking to, what they want, and why they want it, and building the right mousetrap. So he got up. The first thing that he actually sold, <clears throat> I believe, was it was the kiss test. And he said, basically, for $7, I can give you my kiss test, and it will tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, if the woman is ready to be kissed and she wants you to be the one to do it. And he said, and if she doesn't, it will get you off the hook with no embarrassment and no fear of rejection because there won't be any. And he said, in fact, if she's not ready and, and, and you get the signal, it's going to put you in a power play. That's going to make her want to kiss you on the next time you see her. And I mean, you talk about just like bringing the bird to the cat. <laughs> and he sold the kiss test for, I think it was seven bucks. And the kiss test was really simple. All it was, we said at the end of the night, when you're standing face to face with her, you know, she's about ready to go in her house and you're about ready to go on your way. He said, you just simply just lean in, take your hand like you're going to put it, you know, just behind her neck. And he said, she's either going to come into you, which is your signal, go, she's good to go, no rejection, no fear. He said, if she does anything beyond that, so she pulls back or, or freaks out or looks startled in any way, that's your signal. She's not ready. So what you do is you, you go and you, you act like there was something in her hair. So you weren't going in for a kiss. You were just being nice. You were just trying to fix, you know, trying to do her a favor. And two things is going to happen there. 
she's going to be off her game because she misread your play and she penalized you for trying to do something nice to her. And now she's going to want to reciprocate. So it's going to build the bond instead, instead of breaking the trust and freaking out and say, Oh my God, this dude's a creeper. She's going to fall in love with you. And that was his kiss test. (laughs) I think that worked for a whole lot of people. And then what do you think's next? The kiss. Now he goes on his way. What does he want now? He wants to get on the other side of the door, right? So that's 297, how to get in and what to do after you're behind the door. And and then it's like, take this game to a whole nother level. And they're going to go out and they're going to do this on the fly. And he's appealing to the players. So he separated the ones from one, wanting a true romance and wanting to get married and a lifelong partner, he satisfied them with the 295 and he's isolated an elite group that will pay him 10,000 for the ultimate power. So talk about a master of strategy, this guy. And that's why I wanted to promote him. I could have made a boatload of money just sending traffic to this guy but he didn't have an affiliate program he didn't even know what that was and i found out that was when i i I switched gears i took the fork in the road i did commercial services and never looked back and next thing i know he's got an affiliate program and he's made 20 million dollars off people selling his stuff the first year he did that and i actually met him again I went to an internet marketing conference and I see this guy on stage and I recognized his voice. I recognized his look and his name was Eben Pagan and he was at a marketing conference and he was talking about marketing. And I'm like, it finally hit me about halfway through his speech. I'm like, holy shit, that's David D'Angelo. They were one in the same. So David D'Angelo was just a fake name he came up with to operate in the space of the the dating arena. His real name was Eben Pagan. And I asked him about it. I'm like, dude, what, you know, why did you do that? You know, why didn't you go with your real name? And he said, who's going to want to take dating advice from an Eben Pagan? So everything about it was engineered right down to the name of the persona of the guru. David D'Angelo, it just sounds sexy. And he wasn't a sexy guy. I mean, if you looked at this guy on the street, you'd think, yeah, yeah, good luck to him with women. But (laughs) (laughs) proof positive that marketing works and good marketing works always the same way. It is a very strategic path of how you get from A to Z. And it's always following the timeline. The importance of figuring out that timeline and the feeling of your of your prospect at every step of the way so you can communicate is so important. I I don't even know how to relate how important that is. But it's the difference between struggling to market a good thing and selling, you know, information just out of the sky for $20 million a year. That's the kind of difference you're talking about there. I've seen people with the greatest products on earth that couldn't sell them to save their life because they didn't do that work. They didn't have that sales process. They didn't do the simple nuts and bolts. They didn't figure out the timeline. They didn't figure out why they would want it, what it was going to do for them, all that stuff. And they're just going to struggle. And it's a shame because they have great stuff. So... Anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I got what I needed to learn. I'm out of here. <laughs> I started dating relationship. <laughs> oh, this guy, I mean, he was so freaking good at the communication. It was unreal. I mean, I was married. I wasn't looking to go date people, and I just found this information absolutely fascinating. And I could relate it back to my days when I was dating and, and like, holy shit, you know, everything he's saying was right on the money, you know, for what worked, what didn't work. 
I mean, he, he had it down. <laughs> and I just got something very exciting in the mail here. And he, eh, you guys probably can't see it. It's a priority mail. It is my iHub Global hotspot. So now I'm going to be able to money. It showed up. It actually it showed, showed up. It showed up just now today. So I'm going to be able to mine the helium crypto. Uh, good luck. <laughs> I've had mine for a week. Oh, yeah? And all I'm having is frustration with it. Oh. I'll get there, but good luck. All right. Well, I watched. We should collaborate on uh, what you're doing and how yours will set up. And because you well, probably know more than I do. I'm going to have an interesting test for it because it's going on my boat and my boat is about a hundred yards from the Long Beach Grand. Yeah, Pool. you are beautifully, beautifully positioned. Mm -hmm. So hopefully this thing will do its deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that's about all I have for you this week. Any Anything else before we wrap up? Nope. You guys got a couple of my, my good past stories this week <laughs> Eben pagan i have an unlimited supply of those it seems i know that that was awesome <laughs> i love the john stories <laughs> i think we'll probably see you in an hour and a half yep mm -hmm. all right guys we'll have a great week and uh, after the next call, I'm, I'm off for fishing. I'm going to go hunt big game. So I'll be back on Monday. <laughs> Have fun. All right, Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.